Life's a game, the world's a stage, and we are merely role players, where theatrical people play role playing games. I'm Matt Boothman, and I'm your compare. Let me show you to your seats. Here on Merely Role Players, we improvise stories to entertain ourselves and you. And we use role playing games to keep those stories going places even we can't see coming. Because, as theatrical people, we're all about maximising the drama, darling. This episode is part of Labyrinth Untold, one of our studio productions. In this production, Natalie Winter will be our Goblin Queen for a race against time through Jim Henson's Labyrinth The Adventure Game. So please take your seats in the studio. Tonight's production is about to begin. We have been walking through the junkyard, and despite best attempts from some of the party to sneak past, distract the junk ladies that were occupying the clearing in the middle of this junkyard, were well distracted by Linda and uh, enabled uh, Sir Sir Barold and Gundal to sneak through successfully. However, unfortunately, our large horned beasts, not quite so stealthy, so I've drawn attention. Winkle, um, nowhere to be found, is somewhere in the (laughs) mountain of junk. Truly, anyone trying to find uh, you, it's like a needle in a haystack at this point. I am not even going to allow any of them to roll to find you. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's how hidden you are <laughs> with a great clatter one of our horned beasts has caught a corner of the junk pile with a with a big toe alerting the junk ladies to your presence and they immediately turn around Shirley whose uh, collection is uh, attached to a, a long a wide plank strapped to her shoulders has just batted the other two <laughs> with uh, with her collection but all three have turned around and spotting the two horned beasts are going to immediately bustle up to you. Oh, hello, yes. Oh, nice to see you. What have you got? What are you doing? Oh, let's have a look. And they immediately start ruffling through your fur to see what do you have on you? I have a single item. It is the pink potion, which makes people prone to persuasion Mm. slash gullible. And there's Mm. one dose remaining in that. I also have a hair thingy. Did we establish what colour the bobble was, the bow? Green. Rufo is, is also there looking a little startled and uh, kind of looking down at these bundles of people around his feet. Ooh. They'll, they'll start prodding through your fur. One of them will pick up the spray. Oh, that's nice. Is that something you like, is it? Oh, we can, we can find you more if you like. You're going, it's very dangerous out in the labyrinth. You're going to need more help, absolutely. Oh, what have you got? What have you got there, Margaret? Oh, I've got one of these. Um, and they're going to start grabbing junk and piling it on top of you. So uh, one of them uh, grabs uh, a little bunny rabbit. Mm. And, and puts that on your foot. Uh, oh, there's a, there's a pencil box here. You like colours? Here's all the colours. Yes, have those colours. Uh, and, oh, how about this? And going to bring out a little ballerina in a music box. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is like your bow, isn't it? The, the, the box is green and the ballerina inside is wearing green. Mm. And start piling on top. Um, Rufo doesn't distinctly have any items mm. about his person, which they are all... Outrage! Oh, you don't have anything. No, you 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 can't go unarmed. It's dangerous to go alone. Take this. I will hand uh, hand Rufo. Um, here you go. Have, a, have this. This is a teddy bear. Here. The rest of you, obviously, are sneaking away. What would everyone like to do? We we can't let this happen. Look. Look at all the things they're choosing for for poor Linda. None of them go. <laughs> <laughs> they're, oh. They're choosing that just because it's green. How basic. (laughs) They're ruining her look. We've got to help her. Linda looks concerned. I believe that interpreter's distress, and therefore I will charge in. 
uh, with intention to attack? To... No, I think to more to confuse. <laughs> I want to sort of duck and weave on my steed, obviously, mm-hmm. around the ladies so that they get a bit flustered and confused, which might give Linda and Rufo time to amble on through. And I'm, I'm just going to flap along in Harold's wake, just yelling stuff like, now be more intentional about your choices. Build an aesthetic. <laughs> Don't just add more things. <laughs> so I think usually this would be um, a four, but you're allowed to make it a three as we've got extra distraction. Thank you for your help, the <laughs> Gundal. This is a, a very night of your thing to do. So you're rolling with advantage, looking okay. for a three. Three. What ho, ladies! Lovely day! <laughs> oh, what a lot of things you've got! <laughs> oh, oh, yes, we have things. You have things, too. Do you want things? They're going to try and start following you, mm-hmm. uh, but you're very fast, and yeah. they are very slow. So yeah. they're going to be immediately distracted by this whirl of energy. And I think you mm. as well, Gundel, you've got paper and paints mm. and, and that kind of thing around you. So I think what they're going to do is two of them are going to start hobbling after Sir Barold, who can easily stay out of... You can sort of trot a bit, wait, trot yeah, a bit, wait. Yeah. let them think they're catching up. Yeah, and then one of them is going to um, see the the painting equipment. Uh, oh, we've never quite established this, Gundel. Mm-hmm. You're not carrying it in your foot, are you? Is it, like, just tucked in a wing? I've, I've, no. got, a, I've got a sling in bag. Satchel. Yes, you have a sling bag, yes. And the paintbrush is, like, sticking at the top oh, of it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and the bag itself is, like, paint-stained and yeah. all sorts. Is it one of those ones that's, like, a bum bag, but you're wearing it across your yeah, body? Yeah, yes. It's very trendy. Yes, mm-hmm. yes Very on indeed. point. It's immediately <laughs> ageing, this recording. <laughs> <laughs> One of them, <laughs> I think it's going to be uh, Shirley of mm-hmm. Plank fame, is going to snatch the pencil box that she gave to you off you. Oh, well, no, no, you don't need I, this. This person needs it more, I'm afraid. Snatch the pencil case off you, turn around, mm-hmm. get a bit stuck because she's not strong enough to like properly whack you. But the the plank will whack you. Oh. So it's more of an inconvenience for you, Linda. Yes. Uh, so you get whacked, and then she has to, like, shuffle sideways. And then goes chasing after <laughs> Gundel. Ah, no, you, you like, artistic equipment here. You will need these. You know how, like, if you're running away from a bear, you're supposed to, like, chuck things for them <laughs> yeah. to, like, inspect? Yeah. I'm going to chuck one of the empty spray bottles behind me and go, oh, look at that, as I'm, <laughs> as I'm running away. <laughs> so trying to catch Barold's eye going, Barold, conga of peril, conga of peril. <laughs> conga as, of as, peril. As, we're, as we're leading the junk ladies. <laughs> as they're sort of doddering around chasing the two of you, they will say, oh, but, but we can help you. We can find anything you want. Yes, anything you want, we can help you find. You'll need help going forward. Do you not want our help? I've had quite enough helpful help today. Thank you very much. (laughs) We'll just be on our way. (laughs) This is a scary place. Mm. I think it would be nice to leave with my rabbin ballerina, though. Save yourselves, Linda and Rufo. We'll catch you up. The hornbees start making their way to the exit. I want to cut across to Winkle. What are you doing? Where are you? I've been having a lovely time. Yeah. I've just been walking across. It's been very peaceful, just over little bits of junk. Every now and again, I've heard some sort of noises through muffled through the junk piles. This has been a lovely little journey. I'm just making my way towards the exit. I'm sure the others are fine. I think along the way, you come across a, an upturned teapot uh, oh. where the lid is sort of not quite in the pot and it's sort of slightly ajar. Another worm is just hanging out. Hello. Hello. Uh, uh, how's your day going? Oh, you wouldn't believe it. I started outside, and then I came inside, and then there was this man with a bird on his head, mm-hmm. and then there's the goblin queen, and then uh, oh, I, I, I fought a goblin in single combat and won. Right. Goodness, that sounds like an exhausting day. Oh, I know. Tell me about it. And it's just going to keep on getting more exhausting because we've got to get to the middle of the uh, of the labyrinth and then I'm going to have to become a knight. I've got a sword, look. Ooh. Oh, that's, that's very impressive. Well done. Yes. I, I, it sounds very exhausting. Are you sure you don't want to? Do you want to come inside for a cup of tea instead? <sighs> you know what? I think we've got time. Yeah? Yeah, oh, go on it. then. Come inside and meet the missus. <laughs> Can't stay too long, but definitely we're going to throw a cuppa. Oh, of course, yeah. We'd love to hear more about your stories. Tell oh. us how you defeat the, defeated that goblin. Oh, I will. Don't you worry. 
He got really small, and then I poked him in the bum with my sword. A classic. <laughs> Absolutely. A classic. Absolutely. I'm going to be a knight before you know it. Winkle's the name. Don't forget it. So Winkle? Not yet. Not yet. But one day, once I get my medals and work out a way of attaching them to me. The horn beasts make it to the exit. Yeah. Go, 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 go! Yeah. Lapping round to it. You still see no sign of Winkle. Just as we're meeting up to get to the exit. Have you got Winkle? No. Uh, Winkle's making his own way, I believe. Oh, I thought you or Linda had him. Is that bad? Isn't it bad for you? Don't you need to, don't you need to knight him or something when you get there? Well, I just assumed he'd catch us up. Is this a knight thing about, like, trusting your allies to do their own thing? That's not one of the rules, technically. <laughs> uh, but, it, you know, Winkle does seem to have been doing very well in his knight training. Oh, well, if you're, if you're confident that he's going to catch us up, then let's keep going. Well, I sort of thought he'd catch us up by now, actually. Oh, no. <laughs> do we need to go back for him? Well... Should we not just pause just here at the exit? Rufo will uh, look around concerned. Time. No time. And will again raise his head to the sky. Florence, whose collection I previously mentioned was made entirely of newspapers and magazines, the uh, the collection falls apart upon her back. Mm. Starts unfolding and unfolding, and starts flying around. There's a thousand paper aeroplanes mm. suddenly fill the sky mm. of this junkyard and swirl around, and now form a wall. Not quite a door, <laughs> a wall between the junk ladies remaining and yourselves. It's not watertight. A worm could get through, but it is definitely stopping them from getting to you. Mm-hmm. Ahead, like the other side, you can see that the junkyard continues and it changes from sort of like random broken toys and bits of kitchen equipment and uh, piles of books and things. And you can start to see um, towards the end, it starts to get to like racks and racks of clothes further, further along. Look, from my point of view, Every minute that passes is another bum drawn on my beautiful <laughs> frescoes by horrible goblins. But this is about your squire, Sir Barold. I feel like this has to be your call. Do we wait for him to catch up or do we go on ahead? Wait for worm friend. <sighs> we, have, we, did, we did gain that hour and we have made good time. Bums are bad, I know. <laughs> it's not but... that they're bad exactly. Sometimes it can be tasteful. It's just they put them everywhere. <laughs> I so trust that that's... Winkle will be here soon. You have a lovely cup of tea. Mm, of course. A lovely cup of tea, Winkle. Well, it's a famous for those cups of tea. It's hard to tell how much time passes because, uh, you know, you're very small. Time's different down here. Yeah. <laughs> The missus is lovely. She makes a fantastic cup of tea. Of course. They wish you well on your way. They're very excited about your story. And you are able to inch your way through the junk piles. Um, because you stopped for a cup of tea, yep. this encounter has cost you two hours. You are eventually reunited with the rest of the party. Uh, there's a very big wall of paper, but there is a, there's a worm-sized uh, gap for you to crawl underneath. Hey! Winklebad! <laughs> Winkle. Silly. <laughs> well, I, I came as quick as I could. Winkle slow. Winkle worm. Winkle slow worm. Were you waylaid by something awful? No. Um. Quite delightful, actually. <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad somebody's had a nice time. No, it's a lovely, lovely junkyard. You allowed yourself to be waylaid when your comrades were suffering. They were suffering? Of course we were suffering. But we were all just going to sneak past. Didn't you do that? We tried, but we were not all successful. Of course, we never leave anyone behind. Bad sneak. Oh. Rufo noisy. Oh. I'm terribly sorry. I just... Next time... You know, you can always shout and I'll I'll run as quick as I can. Well, this should be a lesson to observe 
what your fellow knights are doing whilst you embark on your own journey. You are individual, but also a team. A team? Winkle in team. <laughs> You're right. Yes, I will be in a team. I'm in a team. Congratulations. First in a teapot, then in a team. <laughs> you were in a teapot? Uh, yes, I was. I was in a teapot. Well, that sounds quite nice. That's a... It was lovely. It's a delightful image. <laughs> I had some tea in there from an even smaller teapot. It's teapots all the way down, don't you know? <laughs> we should carry on. <laughs> it was Earl Grey. <laughs> Talk and walk, friend. <laughs> you reach the uh, the clothes rails and it looks like you get to a point where there's no clear path on the floor, like through the junkyard. You're going to have to go through the clothes. Ooh. And as you start pushing your way through the clothes, that sort of spring air that you felt before changes to a a slightly crisper smell. You sort of just get a slight sense that the air has shifted as you start working your way through these clothes and they get a little more mothball-y as well. There's some (laughs) big woolen coats Mm. that have that musty smell to them. Uh, Some silks that have been gnawed away at Mm. by moths over the years. Eventually you realise that the light has gone and you find yourselves as a group tumbling through into a wooden floored shop. As you start to feel the wood on the floor, you hear Rufo going, Rufo, no, you're... And the voice gets quieter and quieter as you tumble into the shop. Mm -hmm. Farewell, Rufo, you've been a marvellous friend. Where Rufo go? I believe Rufo... Chooses to stay home in your. That mean we're not in your anymore. I suspect that is the case. Greetings, customers. Yeah. <laughs> you are approached <laughs> in what I remind you is a shop, <laughs> a wooden shop with piles of clothes everywhere, swaths of fabric upon the ceiling in a like jewel colours. Everything's just a little bit shabby. There's also wherever there is not cloth. There are broken mirrors mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. And approaching you is a surprisingly tall goblin. <laughs> it's like a, a human, like a, a goblin queen sized <laughs> goblin. Ooh. Right. But not in the right proportions. I'm immediately looking at her middle to see if she's two goblins standing on each other's shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> no, there seems to be like goblin proportion, head, shoulders, torso, and knees. And then mm. very long legs. Oh. <laughs> Under pantaloons. <laughs> and she's she's got this enormous powdered wig, a doublet that is filthy. And she says, My name is Flog. Welcome to my boutique emporium. <gasps> my goodness, what are you wearing? <laughs> I was going to say exactly the same thing to you. <laughs> the latest, the height of goblin fashion, my dear. <sighs> Always following fashion, goblins. Never developing style. <laughs> 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 well, if this won't do, you cannot go about the goblin city dressed like this. Outrageous. Why, what'll happen? Well, people will judge you. That would feel terrible. <laughs> <laughs> they they may send you. Hold on a minute. Like brings an eye very close to your beak. Unblinking, staring into her eyes. <laughs> That's terrifying. <laughs> you want to make me an intimidation roll? Ooh, you're quite scary. I think as good. I don't have. Three. I don't have being scary as like a trait or anything though. Um, would being a snob to her be a disadvantage in this situation? No, because nope. she's being a snob to you. Also true. Okay. Looking for a three or higher. Five. A five. Mm. As she gets super close to you, you see something in her eyes shift. I, well, also what I mean to say is, of course, you are all goblins, are you not? Here in the Goblin City, yes, yes. I look at all of the others. You yes. are all goblins. Big goblin, yes. A very small goblin, absolutely. Yes, goblin-sized goblin, I suppose. Ish. 
Yes. We're all goblins, including me. I'm very, very proud of you, yes. <laughs> Thank goodness it would be terrible if anyone were to discover a non-goblin here in the goblin city. They they may be taken to the gibbets. Well, they to be found. Well, we certainly wouldn't want that. Uh, but now that we've established no. that we are all goblins, mm. how do we avoid this confusion in the future? Well, your dress sense leaves much to be desired if you were to dress like the goblins that you definitely are. Then, then you will be. It will be easier for you to walk among the streets of the Goblin City. Is this just a really good sales tactic? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like we might need a Goblin makeover. Yes, uh, which I think some of us were going to enjoy a little bit more than others. Disguise, <laughs> disguise. <laughs> yes, I suppose we better submit to it. I don't know what we can offer in terms of payment, though. She hasn't asked for any yet, so let's not raise the subject. Oh, maybe she what was that about me? payment? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you know it's terribly rude, bad customer service to so listen in while your customers have a huddle. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have excellent hearing. <laughs> I cannot help it. <laughs> so, our dress sense then. You have some opinions, I take it? Oh, yes. Well, this indicates your satchel bag. This is quite marvellous. However, it works some uh, goblin flair. And she'll start pulling stuff up, off racks. There's almost a, a little vibe of the, the junk ladies in a way, because this is a pile of yeah. junk clothes, and she is kind of throwing stuff upon you. Now, I pride myself on uh, excellent customer service. I could not bear to see you all walking around the goblin city styled so appallingly. So, I would take... Mere, mere simple trinkets or promises in terms of payment. If you had anything you would like to promise. Can I just give you this shiny thing? I take off my thimble. Oh. Shiny thing. I do like shiny things. There we go. Hmm. Yes, I can put much better use for this than in your outfit, I think. She will pocket your thimble. Any other offerings? Hair thingy from human. A human hair thingy? Look, green hair thingy. She tries to, like, reach up for it. Before, like, obviously, you've just indicated that you were offering it. Uh, but she has tried to reach up and nearly loses her balance on her now quite obvious stilts that she has <laughs> stood upon. <laughs> oh, and grabs onto your fur. Mm. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, oh... Never seen human hair thingy so delightful before. Yes, this will do for two. Yes. Anyone? Do you need anything painting? I don't have anything shiny, but I can make things look... Gundle's about to say beautiful. Nice. <laughs> well, apparently you cannot. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> it stinks. <laughs> what supplies have you in that bag? Paint brushes and paints and chalk, paper, pencils. I've got a few samples of this weird glittery gunk that I've been finding on walls all over the labyrinth. Chalk. I will take chalk. It is good for sewing. And, and face paint and powder and things as well. Yes, my wig requires much powder. <laughs> Very good. Very uh, good, very good. Uh, she will pull some items of clothing down for you. Uh, these items are worn, not carried, so they will not take up your inventory space. Mm -hmm. so let's start with Gundel. Okay. Roll 2d6 twice. A one and a three. Uh-huh. And then again? Yep. A four and a five. Okay. <laughs> she, <laughs> oh, pulls, no. she pulls down for you. Uh, a large metal helmet in the shape of a pig. <laughs> mm, yes, this looks perfect. It does not fit on your head at all, but she kind of clanks it on you and then looks at your feet and then brings out a pair of clawed gloves. Uh, they're probably goblin size. Mm -hmm. They probably fit over like one toe mm -hmm. of yours. 
do you now have like out of your like three forward toes and one back toe, you have one toe that's got <laughs> tiny like extra toes. Great. <laughs> on each foot. Yes. Mm. Looks so much more like a goblin. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Barold. Three and a five. A six and a five. Glad you're having fun. <laughs> I'm having a delightful time. <laughs> oh, well, these are quite synergistic. <laughs> she pulls out a large hessian sack and lumps it upon your back. Okay. Um, as it is attached to you, you realise it is wriggling. Oh. <laughs> you hear lots of squeaking from inside. Okay. Is it a bag of rats? <laughs> it's a bag of rats. Oh. <laughs> Mostly alive, it says in brackets. <laughs> Great. At least it's not worms. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, something for your steed, I think. And she pulls out a whole bunch of mouse traps and clamps them onto bits of oh. hedge. Winkle. That's a four and a three. And a six and a two. The first thing she pulls out for you... And uh, she has managed to find something small enough. So to replace your thimble helmet, Mm -hmm. there is now a tiny... It looks like it was made for a small doll. A helmet in the shape of a pumpkin. (laughs) And then she also provides you with with a cloak with a deep hood. So it's just like one of those tiny little cloaks that's just like short around the shoulders, Mm -hmm. but then has a massive hood (laughs) to fit over your pumpkin helmet. (laughs) Lovely. Wait, that's actually cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I was wondering. Yes. Do you have any uh, any more of those stilts? Stilts? No, these are mine. Well, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> stilts. <laughs> so there's no, there's no other, no other things to make me taller. There are no stilts in this room. Oh. oh uh, to to make you taller. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Let me come back to you. Okay. You. Let's find something for you. Six, four. Six, one. Okay. After, um, immediately after what she has just said, the next thing she pulls down is a pair of stilts. (laughs) (laughs) For the tallest (laughs) member of the party. (laughs) Well, well, it turns out I do have some. (laughs) Uh, Make yourself to use how you will. And hands them over to you. Uh, you can attach them however you like. What size are they? They're, they're stilts to make a goblin human size. They're probably uh, they're probably about like couple of foot. Yeah, yeah couple okay, of foot tall. Right. They're not much good to me. Okay, yep. And also, uh, you you will have to bend down for this. Bend. Uh, she places down upon your head uh, a poofy wig, much like her own. Ah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> The Georgian style, tall, and then with the ringlets down. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, you may have lost your human bow, but this has a couple of little bows on the ringlets hanging down as well. Great. Excellent goblin disguises. A great trade has been made today. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, fellow goblin. Uh, oh, yeah, I was going to come back to you, was I not? Yes. Um, hmm. Let me see. Fresh out of stilts. <laughs> Fresh out of stilts. <laughs> I'll be on a worm on stilts. I sold them to a to a different customer. <laughs> I, I, excuse me, she says to Sir Barold, and uh, she will pull out of your bag of rats mm. three rats. Mm. <laughs> Mostly um, alive ones. <laughs> the alive ones, yes. Uh-huh. And we'll find a long ribbon and tie the three of them together horizontally. So, so stack them. Stack the stacked three. Rats. Yeah. Stacked rats. Stacked yeah. rats. Stack a rat. Stack a rat. Stack a rat. With a little bow on top that you're able to grip onto. <laughs> Lovely. This is taller for a one. <laughs> Thank you. This is more than I could have possibly like imagined. Steed. You mean for a short goblin? <laughs> for a short goblin. For a very short goblin. <laughs> it's like a rat roller skate situation. <laughs> Are you going to give all three of them a name or just one collective name for the whole steed? Um, Steve. <laughs> I think they'll be individually named but have some sort of like band name. Stop. They'll be the Rockettes. <laughs> oh. Could you roll to see if you, oh, manag- you manage to tame this steed? I was not expecting that. Relative to your size, <laughs> yeah. these three rats... <laughs> They're massive. This is going to be a difficulty three. 
I have a steed. <laughs> <laughs> what a grotesque and weird steed. Are you okay has? with me joining your steed? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I, I don't feel threatened. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> It's quite nice that your steed came from uh, my bag of rats. <laughs> West for you to walk after now. <laughs> I feel like you've left me with ones that don't need any attention. Yeah. Just dead ones. <laughs> Just dead ones. You do still have some alive rats in there. Okay. It's quite a big bag of rats. <laughs> like, relative to you, who is quite a small fox, yeah. like, there were probably about like 15 rats oh, in there. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Think of all the things you could do with them. Oh, let them go. You can make steeds for five words. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you have the cavalry. As long as you make put the dead ones in the middle of the stacks. <laughs> Sad. <laughs> you make your way out into the Goblin City? Yes. yes. Gund- yeah. Fine. <laughs> Gundel leads the way, and so all of you can see what Gundel didn't see because he just closed his eyes as she jammed this helmet on his head, which is that it's got a pig's face on the front and a pig's bum on the back. <laughs> 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 Uh, so as you step out, the, the Goblin City is like bustling metropolis. There's lots of very uh, like tall and wonky Tudor-style houses, all kind of folding on top of each other, leaning against each other. There are so many houses that look like they should not architecturally stand, mm. and yet they do. There are like street hawkers selling food, selling trinkets, some dwarves who are desperately trying to keep things clean and tidy. And it's just not happening at all. Um, you do like very rarely, maybe like see like a knight of your, but like it's mostly goblins around here. They're a bit down on their luck if they're here. Yeah, uh, the goblins are not. They're not being particularly nice to anyone who is not a goblin mm. here. And there are posters you see around the city, awkward, childish <laughs> stick figure drawings of a horned beast, a knight with a green dog and uh, a big bird. It's nice that they've added privet, but that they're, they're, they've had much longer to work on these ones and they're not any better. <laughs> no, and you still can't see our worm friend very clearly. Where's my wig? <laughs> oh, this wig disguise. <laughs> mm. There are also goblins. A lot of goblins have weapons and are armoured mm. and do look like they're kind of patrolling up and down with like long spears and and spiked flails like on the lookout for mysterious people Mm. you come across a small town square that has uh, an enormous bulletin board upon it Uh, it takes up the entire side of this building covered with scraps and scraps and scraps of paper there are loads of goblins who are arguing over it I am curious and far more mobile now. I have a stack of rats. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to approach and see what's going on. As you approach with your uh, on your stack of rat steed, you just get a, a little like helmet tip goblin, goblin, and you approach the the papered wall closer. You can see uh, at the very top, spelled badly, it says "Wall of Laws." Mm. Upon that wall, it says. <clears throat> Opera attendance is mandatory. It is illegal to have a shadow. Oh dear. The colour purple is to be shunned. <gasps> no! And peace is declared with the shoe thieves. Right. That goblin that said goblin to you uh, mm-hmm. has clearly not been able to see past your... Um, you've got your, your got, cloak on. And my big and your pumpkin, pumpkin helmet. helmet yeah. Hiding mm-hmm. most of you, so... Uh, I can't see that you're purple. No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but there are a couple of goblin soldiers that look like they're a bit confused and looking at the board. That was different yesterday. Yes. Uh, it's very tricky keeping up with all of these. And then you hear from down the street... <laughs> Uh, by order of the Goblin Queen, all days of the week are now a Wednesday. <laughs> a scribe will furiously <laughs> write it down. What are the rest of you doing? Trying to keep a low profile. Trying to get through the square without anybody bothering me. Yeah, mm-hmm. my thoughts exactly. Somehow trying yeah. to be discreet. <laughs> Sidling. Looking around at all of the actual goblins and seeing how they're acting and trying as much as possible to mimic... So mm-hmm. seeing that you know they're greeting each other by going goblin at each other, yep. starting to do that 
Great. I would like each of you to make a roll to describe how you are acting goblin. Bearing in mind, Winkle at the moment is the only one who knows the laws. Mm -hmm. Sure. We heard that all days are Wednesday. You heard all days are Wednesday. My attempt to act goblin is just informed by a lifetime of being a snob towards goblins and just thinking that their taste is the worst. Mm -hmm. So I'm... Just trying to, like, be as gross and tasteless as possible. Great. I'm not holding my farts in. I'm being rude, shoving people, Mm -hmm. like an uncouth goblin impression. Make me a roll for that then, please. You have a disguise, Mm -hmm. which is going to give you advantage. Okay. I'm going to set this as a difficulty three. The interesting question is, does my snobbery give me disadvantage because my impression of them is informed by my snobbery rather than by actual observations of what they're like. (laughs) So it might not be accurate. So you mean you've wrangled yourself down to a flat roll there? Yeah. Four. Four. Nice. So Barold. So Barold is, well, naive. Yeah. So sort of just thinks, well, if you're just nice to everyone, it'll be fine. (laughs) Yeah. He is also trying to fit in Mm -hmm. because he wants... To make all the goblins comfortable. Mm. So he's encouraging <laughs> Privet to do little poos. Um, what are their little hedgy poos? Yeah. <laughs> Leaf. Bulbs. Oh, maybe bulbs. Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> I suppose that's more like laying, laying an egg. <laughs> 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 yeah. Maybe it's, maybe it's um, <laughs> old leaves. Yeah, like, well, I guess a waste product for a hedge would be, mm. would be old leaves. Brown leaves. leaves. Brown leaves, exactly. <laughs> and it's also adopting, you know, the... the, the the greetings that you can hear and, mm-hmm. and the Wednesday announcement. He's yeah. really taken that on. So he's going, ooh, lovely Wednesday to everybody. <laughs> lovely Wednesday, goblin, goblin, lovely Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Make me that roll then, with advantage, looking for three. Oh, six and a five, so. Fabulous, yes. You get lots of, like, goblin Wednesday, goblin, Wednesday goblin. Yes. Uh, Linda. Linda. Oh, how are you trying to goblin? Linda is in pretending to be very interested in the shiny things that the other goblins have got. I mm-hmm. like just trying to be excited about accessories in a way that uh-huh. she's seen Smart. other people be, other goblins Great. be. <laughs> yeah, that one's a five. Woo-hoo. Good work. Well, I can't dally here all day. I must be off to the opera. <laughs> <laughs> very good. <laughs> Onwards. Oh, five and a six. Five and a six. Splendid. Uh, so with all those rolls, especially despite Linda's size, like no one has noticed that you have shadows. Especially since as you are now out into the city itself outside, you've noticed like any trees that are here have like a, a, a red wash on their leaves. Everything has that slight, it's still warm, but there is a little crispness to the wind. Mm-hmm. The leaf poops that Privet is leaving blended in mm-hmm. with the remaining leaves that are on the floor. Linda, you can sense that this is an autumn wind Mm -hmm. that is bustling around the city as well. And occasionally, as you make your way through the Goblin City, you will occasionally see goblins arguing about, uh, you've got a shadow that's banned. (laughs) No, I I don't have it. You also have a shadow. (laughs) What? Oh, no. And they start fighting. With that cry of, I must to the opera. In the middle of another street, a clearing amongst these ramshackle houses, you find a puppet show theatre. Mm. has been erected in the middle, surrounded by a raucous crowd, Mm. because you must go to the opera. (laughs) (laughs) And as you approach, a group of goblins grab you. Oh, thank goodness, where have you been? We're about to begin! And before you can protest, puppets are thrust in your hands. (laughs) Oh no. And the curtains draw back. We thought it was Wednesday. (laughs) (laughs) The curtains draw back to an ear-splitting cheer from the crowd of goblins. Each of you has been given a puppet. Could each of you roll 2d6? Six, five. Six, five. A map and a puppet costume of some clerical robes. So the map is wearing clerical robes. (laughs) Five, three. A violin wearing Mm -hmm. a chef's apron. Sure. (laughs) One four. A plate of sausages and a ball gown. Oh, <laughs> that's nice. That's a sick burn, isn't it? You've got like a plate of sausages and a ball gown. I don't know why I like that, but I really do. <laughs> a gundle. Three and a six. A fan in a long wig. 
you look around and you spot at the top of the theatre, there is a sign that says, Today's performance, the case of the pickled boot. You hear the goblins behind you. Go on, announce the show. The show! <laughs> and Linda just stands there with like one hand, with like a map gown mess, and a big smile, and the other arm out wide, like. All wow, the goblins yeah, cheer. There's the show! <laughs> yeah. um, I think there's an intro song. Mm-hmm. Lovely. I think it's an opera, right? Yeah. Mm. So. Maybe it could be like a townsfolk singing scenario uh-huh. where they're all just going, the case of the big gold boot, the case of the big gold boot. And it gets like the crowd going. How are their props working through this? Uh, quite bouncy. <laughs> <laughs> Those sausages, no. they bounce in. <laughs> not a wangling. Also, we're probably not all of the right height to be... No, it's quite a difficult fit. Yeah. In this, uh, <laughs> the boot. The, the, the Punch and Judy show style. It's it's a large one of those. Mm, there is like yeah. a mm. Lindy. You can fit your head and an arm mm. into view, mm. but your your bottom is sticking out the side of the theatre. Yeah, that happens. There is a struggle to see the violin and a chef's apron. Well, at the moment, it's quite difficult. You can't for you see to... the violin and chef's apron because the chef's going to have to make a big reveal at the end of the opening song mm. uh-huh. when the chef discovers the pickled boot in one of their pots. Mm. Uh-huh. Okay. This is what we're building up to. This is the... Fan in the wig is going to be a, a customer, a snobby customer waiting for their food at the chef's posh restaurant. As we're leading towards the climax of the scene, you will hear some goblins shout, When does the wedding start? <laughs> <laughs> I hastily make the fan in the wig go, when, when will my fiancé arrive (laughs) for our wedding breakfast in this restaurant? Oh, from the crowd. There's a a goblin with a little cigarello back there is like... (laughs) As on effects and it's just taking a real deep puff and blows up and the violin comes out coughing going oh, oh what is this what is this boot <laughs> uh, upon that high note like all of the goblins are instantly cheering and trying to join in with the <laughs> and what is the next scene I think there's a fight another item and wants to steal away the fiance Maybe the chef is trying to steal the fiancé. Is the chef the map or the plate of sausages? The chef is the violin. <laughs> you're, you're... No, wait. Is the fiancé <laughs> the, the map or the plate of sausages? Sausages. Okay. Sausages has got a gown on. Sure, yeah. sure. Fancy wig ball gown. Yeah. yeah. Bride yeah. and groom. <laughs> so I think the fight is between the chef and the fan uh-huh. uh, and the pickled boot is used as a weapon. Oh, mm-hmm. goodness. Oh. Is there a song to accompany this fight? Probably. It's uh, an opera. Maybe it's around what's the best weapon to have in a fight. Mm. Uh-huh. And they try lots of different weapons and then the chef wins the fight because he has a pickled boot. During this song, we, we get another goblin oh, shout. God. This is supposed to be a funeral. <laughs> it will be soon. Yeah, yeah. We, we get in there, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nearly dead. <laughs> It's all right, everyone. Let's just speed up the bludgeoning. Boop, 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 boop. I'm putting the boot in. Putting the boot in. Boop, 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 boop. Putting the boot in. Putting the boot in. Boop, 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 boop. Pickled in your face. That's what goblins like, isn't it? I, I hastily be- bring the fan and the wig below the stage and splash a bunch of red paint on them and then throw them into the crowd. <laughs> well, I mean, they, they, they love a bit of blood mm-hmm. and a bit of gore and a bit of violence. Um, is, uh, what, what is Linda doing during the scene? <laughs> I think Linda's just watching. <laughs> <laughs> Linda's the only one of us who can actually <laughs> see. Yeah. I, I think she's just... Just read into it. Just, yeah. <laughs> Just amazed <laughs> and inspired. It's a brilliant story. Um, she doesn't remember seeing any theatre better oh, yeah. than this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> At the end, the climactic end of that, the one goblin that piped up about the funeral starts uh, going, oh, we like the violence, but but that was not a funeral. That's not what I was led to believe. Boo! <laughs> and all of the goblins around uh, join him. Oh, boo! Boo! Yeah, no, 
Oh. Boo. I told you none of these people have got taste. <laughs> well, let's do a funeral scene. <laughs> we can do some audience participation yeah, and yeah. get them to, to carry it through the streets. Sir, Sir Barrel, you can't just give the audience what they want. You have to <laughs> this give them is a sad funeral song. <laughs> a sad funeral scene. Sad. What you think you can hear and how everyone else experiences Linda singing are not the same. <laughs> they are not the same. No, sure. And what else is happening at this funeral scene? How are the props involved? I think the plate of sausages is going to throw themselves into the open grave. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> like a, take me with you. <laughs> I think the map is like, woe is me, clutching themselves and crying and fainting. Could it be a funeral pyre so we can cook the sausages? <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Chef's all on board with that. So basically we do all the sombre bit mm. and then the fire comes mm. up mm. and yeah. there's a front and the sausage go in and it's all very, very sad. And then all of a sudden the violin turns to the audience and then says, let's give this funeral a bit of sizzle. And then it turns into a really sort of flamboyant... <laughs> like hot musical number. Yeah. <laughs> Can, can it include uh, those that have supposedly died still joining in? Absolutely. Yeah. We have a conga line of sausages. <laughs> <laughs> I've kicked the goblin stage manager up the bum and said, go out, go to that one who keeps yelling about the funeral and get the, the dead body back. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, will, they will scuttle off and grab it. There is a bit of a fight to yeah. try and get the dead body back, but they will, they will bring it back. It's um, going to have to be a closed casket funeral. <laughs> <laughs> Was it not the fan that was yeah. thrown in? Yeah, mm. the fan in the wig. Yeah, um, is, is brought back. It's a little tattered now. Mm. The hairs are misplaced, and the uh, there are holes in the fan. Whilst this is happening, a third goblin will pipe up. Wait a minute! Aren't they actually related? Wait, who? Who? <laughs> Which ones? <laughs> Those. Be more, be more specific. <laughs> Maybe we're all related. Mm. Who's still alive? <laughs> Just the chef. Just us two. Oh, and you, yeah. The chef. The chef and, and the map. The chef and the map are related. <laughs> the vibe. Yes. And both of our children have just died in a horrible fire. So you were fighting your son in order to marry your daughter. <laughs> Bad vibes. Oh no. <laughs> Goblin opera. <laughs> I mean, Oedipus is big into incest. <laughs> yeah. I told city. you the audience doesn't always know the story. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, darling, we must mourn our poor children. <laughs> Wail the song of our. Uh, Love. <laughs> there won't be a dry eye in the house. <laughs> As you finish the final part of this this opera, the goblins throw flowers oh, in celebration. Oh. Um, now these are goblin flowers so um, what they are is like it's a tomato on a stick <laughs> and yeah this is like a, a peeled banana a, a, again like on a on a bit of like rope and, and that kind of thing the audience reaction is positive but you're having fruit and veg thrown at you <laughs> it's very confusing <laughs> they love us they really love us <laughs> it's awful <laughs> in that celebration you are able to sneak away. You do notice goblins being goblins in the the jubilation. They do get very excited and one of them knocks over the pyre, the funeral mm. pyre that you've made and the entire puppet show just lights on fire. <laughs> um, oh, and then uh, they all start running around trying to gather buckets of water. It smells great. It just smells sausages. like a barbecue. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sausages. Yeah, sausages, grilled tomato, banana. <laughs> <laughs> and as you run away and you turn a corner, you see ahead of you a drawbridge leading to the castle of the Goblin Queen. Ooh, we're here. Finally. All right, lovies. It's me, Matt, your compare. I hope you enjoyed Act 4 of Labyrinth Untold. There will now be an interval of two weeks... But to tide you over next week, we'd like to invite you backstage for a collection of outtakes, bloopers, and other cut material from this recording. As you might know if you follow Nat on her social media, 
This was a fairly long recording, so I cut quite a lot of gold material out. So the outtakes episode for this production is a good 20 minutes long. Stay tuned next for the credits and next week for those outtakes. In the meantime, let's take a quick look at the programme together. As you'll know if you've been following this production, if you've been enjoying Nat's turn as the Goblin Queen in control running the game, you can also find her doing that in Games of Dungeons and Dragons on the Roll Together Twitch and YouTube channels. You can find her in a variety of shorter and longer campaigns, one-shots, ongoings, and sometimes with the player hat on and sometimes in the Dungeon Master's chair. And also here in the programme, here's a little ad for my other project. Coming up this week is the premiere of I Need a Miracle, a brand new scripted audio drama podcast I'm launching, where every episode is a prayer, some prayers are answered, and a prayer granted with a miracle can upend the world. It's a 12-episode series. Every episode, a different character played by a new actor sends up a new prayer, hoping for deliverance, expressing their desire. And through those prayers, we learn what a world where miracles are every day might look like, and whether it might be as miraculous to live in as it sounds. Wherever you're listening to Merely Roleplayers, you can also find I Need a Miracle. Just search for I Need a Miracle. Or, if you fancy early access, if you'd like to get access to all 12 episodes this Thursday the 29th instead of just episode 1, you can become an Apollo Plus subscriber. For $9.99 a month, you get early and ad-free access to all of I Need a Miracle, along with ad-free episodes and bonus material for dozens of other audio drama and fiction podcasts, many of which I greatly admire and I'm happy to be sharing a platform with. However you want to listen to I Need a Miracle, free or paid, you can find links to do that in the show notes or at foggyoutline.com. Please hear me. In your benevolence, I implore you, I need a miracle. I beseech you, hear my plea and intervene. Every episode, a prayer. Some prayers are answered. And every prayer granted can upend the world. I Need a Miracle is a divine new audio drama from Foggy Outline and Wireless Theatre. Play God at foggyoutline.com and wherever you find podcasts. Hear my plea and deliver me. See you backstage next week and then the following week for Act 5, the finale of Labyrinth Untold. This has been Labyrinth Untold, a studio production from Merely Roleplayers, starring me, Matt Boothman, as Gundle, Ellie Pitkin as Sir Barold von Branwick, Helen Stratton as Linda, Strat as Winkle, and Natalie Winter as the Goblin Queen. Nat planned this season, I edited and produced this episode, and the theme music is by Alexander Pankhurst. We were playing Jim Henson's Labyrinth, The Adventure Game by Ben Milton and Jack Caesar, published by Riverhorse at riverhorse.eu. Merely Role Players is a Foggy Outline production in association with Blackshaw Theatre Company. Until next time, if drama be the food of life, play on. Foggy Outline. Undivide your world.